Welcome back to Coffee with Melinda. Today for our literature block, we are going to delve deep into the heart of Grendel. Here to help us, Elizabeth Moore, who has just returned from Denmark. How are you this morning? Great. And you, Melinda? I'm doing fantastic. Let's get cracking. One of the top questions we had from our listeners was about the dragon's motivations when he charms Grendel. After reading Beowulf, it should be no surprise when Grendel dies at the end. Since the dragon can travel through space and time, he already knows before his meeting with Grendel that he will be killed by Beowulf. This begs the question, why would he charm Grendel and make him immune to men's weapons if, in the end, he's just going to die? Personally, I would look for the answer on page 63 when the dragon tells Grendel that he could do something because he feels like it or because some supplicant asked him to. Maybe the dragon is just as cruel as Grendel with unfirth and simply wants a temporary escape to his boredom. Or maybe there is someone who asked him to charm Grendel. But who would have had a cause? This is a difficult question to answer, but my guess is his mother. Later in the book, it is stated that Grendel's mother was driven by restless, restlessness and rage. She fell, she fell to him and could not cure. It is my opinion that upon seeing Grendel's depression and increasing interactions with men back in the beginning of the book, his mom could have been filled with worry and, not knowing his final doom, pleaded to the dragon to protect him. She would not have had to verbally talk because the dragon is a mind reader. Our next question comes directly from at Brenda Moss 29. She wants to know more about the impact of Grendel's internal conflict on his external actions. What is your opinion, Elizabeth? All of Grendel's life, he is craved to be accepted and find community. Grendel's childhood was full of uncertainty about his relationship with his mom. On page 17, Grendel tells himself that she loves him in some mysterious sense. He understood her without speaking it. But he also admits that he felt all at once alone and ugly. After being unable to re- re- really connect with his mother because of her speechlessness, spe- speechlessness, he attempts to join men. He picks up curse words from men in their rages and holds, them, holds himself back from moving fast and scaring children. Despite his good intentions and effort, he is misinterpreted because of his appearance and non-traditional offering. Immediately, upon Grendel's entrance to the meat hall on page 52, people scream and drunken men rush him with battle axes. Even as he cries, friend, Grendel is incredibly hurt by his rejection. Despite this desperate for a purpose and convinced that the dragon is correct, Grendel tries to become the completely nihilistic Hrothgar wrecker, even though the Weltau incident shows that he was not fully converted. I think that another possible explanation for his hesitation in killing Weltau could be that Grendel chooses not to kill her because he has finally found his purpose as a monster in terrorizing Hrothgar, which he will lose once he destroys him through his queen. As stated on page 91, he does not know what will happen to the Hrothgar wrecker once Hrothgar has been wrecked. He also is not fully converted because Grendel believes that if men could not accept his hopeful self, inspired by the Shaper, they will have to at least accept him as a completely heartless monster. We're running out of time, but let's quickly answer one more question. At Bobby underscore Bob wants to know why Grendel is so intent on bringing down Hrothgar and how he's affected by this need to attack. Grendel is so intent on bringing down Hrothgar because he is acting on rage. Grendel has been sitting back and letting Hrothgar bring him down for a long while. When Grendel had gotten his foot stuck in the tree trunk, the king snatched an axe from him, from the man beside him and without warning hurled it at Grendel. But since Grendel was able to get through all these attacks, they were merely dismissed. Attacking Hrothgar didn't really cross his mind until Grendel watched Hrothgar and his men for months on end. What they were doing shocked him so intensely he felt that he felt he had to do something to stop it. Over and over, the men would slowly start killing each other. They were killing everything. In fact, it was so bad that the survivors would often go to other soldiers to try and find a home. 
Grendel was also the type of character that is not really scared of anything. He, he himself is a magnific magnificent creature who is able to accomplish so many things, but he still fears Hoth Hrothgar. This is because of his fi fictitious stories told to the group by the Shaper. The Shaper made it seem like he was telling the truth. It frightened Grendel. In ways, his ways, his words. Before, when Grendel hadn't attacked Hrothgar, he didn't feel full. He had always felt an emptiness in him. He needs an answer to why he's the only one that is lonely in this world. Once Grendel completes his first raid, his mind fills with certain grim pleasure. He starts to somewhat feel like this is what his destiny is and that it is his purpose to take away their lives. And he starts to feel more like himself. Wow, what a great discussion. I hope we were able to answer some of your questions. Remember to check in every Tuesday for a new podcast.